When Russia initiated the invasion on the 24th of February, it thought that it would swiftly subdue Ukraine. But Ukrainians' will to fight back and military aid from the West has meant that Russia is now in the middle of a protracted conflict with no end in sight in the foreseeable future. While Russia is the second largest arms exporter in the world, the long-drawn conflict has meant that its military-industrial complex is getting stretched. Six months into the conflict, it became clear that Russia was facing issues with the supply of PGMs, or Precision Guided Munitions. During that time, it seems to have reached out to Iran, and in the last quarter of 2022, Russia started receiving Iranian-made Shahed drones. It used the drone to unleash successive waves of attack on Ukraine's civilian as well as military assets, causing significant damage. In the last few months, there was an increasing possibility of China also aiding Russia, but this seems to have subsided. During a news conference held on April 14th, alongside the German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock, China's Foreign Minister Xinjiang said, Regarding the export of military items, China adopts a prudent and responsible attitude. China will not provide weapons to relevant parties of the Ukraine conflict and will manage and control the exports of dual-use items in accordance with laws and regulations. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how the U.S. stopped China from transferring arms to Russia. Let's get started. Declassified information from the Biden administration at the end of February 2023 revealed that China was contemplating sending weaponry, ammunition, and drones to Russia with the aim of providing direct military support for Russia's ongoing conflict in Ukraine. This revelation was made public and occurred within a month of the U.S. Navy's downing of a Chinese balloon purportedly being utilized for espionage purposes which only served to exacerbate already tense relations between the two countries. China's economic interests in Russia primarily revolve around financial gains, energy resources, and trade prospects. While the U.S. was able to create a divide between the two nations during the Cold War, Russia and China established closer ties and economic interdependence after the conflict ended. Despite Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, China has maintained a neutral stance that appears tilted in favor of Russia. At one point, China was on the brink of providing military assistance to Russia. Insight into this matter has been provided by the recent alleged leakage of intercepted U.S. intelligence reports by Jack Texera a member of the Massachusetts Air National Guard. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Wang Wenbin said China, in context to arms transfer, will never accept the U.S. pointing fingers at Sino-Russian relations or even coercing us. It is the United States, and not China, that is endlessly shipping weapons to the battlefield, Wang said. We urge the United States to earnestly reflect on its own actions and do more to alleviate the situation, promote peace and dialogue, and stop shifting blame and spreading false information. Wang Wenbin said the U.S. was in no position to make demands of China. The records indicate that, based on a U.S. intelligence summary of Russian Signals Intelligence on February 23rd, China's Central Military Commission had approved the incremental provision but wanted to keep it confidential. However, Beijing reversed its decision sometime between February 23rd and April 14th. To discourage China from arming Russia, the U.S. issued a series of direct warnings at different levels. In March 2022, during a meeting between National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and Yang Kai-shi, who was then serving as director of the Chinese Communist Party's Central Foreign Affairs Commission, the first warning was issued. According to Sullivan, we are communicating directly, privately, to Beijing that there will absolutely be consequences for large-scale sanctions evasion efforts or support to Russia to backfill them. In September 2022, the warning was repeated by Secretary of State Antony Blinken to then-Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi at the United Nations. A State Department readout for that meeting stated that Blinken 
reiterated the United States' condemnation of Russia's war against Ukraine and highlighted the implications if the PRC were to provide support to Moscow's invasion of a sovereign state. A few months later, at the 2023 Munich Security Conference, Blinken again drove home the message. A senior State Department official, privy to the actual conversation, briefed reporters that Blinken was quite blunt in warning about the implications and consequences of China providing material support to Russia or assisting Russia with systematic sanctions evasion. The European Union's foreign affairs chief, Joseph Borrell, also stated that China potentially providing arms to Moscow would be a red line in the bloc's relationship with Beijing. It's evident that over the course of slightly more than a year, the Biden administration issued repeated direct warnings to China against providing military support to Russia. After careful consideration of the potential costs and benefits, China ultimately complied with the threat. The events surrounding China's decision not to provide military assistance to Russia exemplified deterrence theory in practice. The situation serves as a successful illustration of the United States employing coercive diplomacy to dissuade China from providing such aid to Russia. China knows how sanctions are slowly but surely affecting Russia. Putin himself admitted this when he said in televised remarks at the end of March, the illegitimate restrictions imposed on the Russian economy may indeed have a negative impact on it in the medium term. A similar set of actions against China will be very difficult to deal with for the communist regime, especially when its economy is in a difficult phase. The United States has already taken some action targeted at the semiconductor industry to reduce its dependency on China, which is affecting Chinese businesses. It's distinctly clear that the U.S. has managed to use its leverage to good effect in this case. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting. and. Kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.